Welcome to Foxy Box, the show where I draw and talk about art. I'm your fox, and this is my box. Today, we'll be talking about an artist that has been at the forefront of my mind, and the minds of many other people. They are also, indirectly, the reason for my entire online existence up to this point. My other channel, Funktilda, has pretty much been nothing but animatics, animations, and memes about this artist, and pretty much everyone associated with them. I am, of course, talking about Vivienne Medrano. Vivienne Medrano, also known as Vivzy Pop, is probably one of the most interesting people in independent online animation at the moment. She is the showrunner for not one, but two adult animated web series, Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss, both of which are set in the same universe, that universe being Hell, and both of which are free to watch in their entirety on YouTube. But in addition to that, she also has a few animated music videos, both of which are notable for being complete works in their own right. Given how hard it is to finish an animation, particularly anything longer than a few seconds, and especially anything that's animated frame by frame, it's impressive that these exist. Vivzy Pop is also the creator of Zoophobia, not to be confused with Disney's Zootopia, which is a webcomic about a girl who finds herself in a world of strange animal people. The characters are very lively, expressive, and colorful. Incidentally, this comic eventually ended up with a short film, titled Bad Luck Jack, which takes place in the Zoophobia universe. Now, the interesting thing about Viv's work, and more specifically, the two Hell shows, is that even though they are both intended for adult audiences, the character designs are very whimsical, and they would not be entirely out of place in a show for younger audiences. In fact, in the show Hell of a Boss, which is essentially a parody of The Office, but in Hell, the character Moxie, who is sort of the punching bag of the group, is played by Richard Horvitz, the same voice actor who played Zim, the invader, in the show Invader Zim. Now, one thing I should probably mention before we get started with this video is that it's okay to be inspired by other people's work. In fact, in my own personal case, watching Vizipop's animated Die Young music video was what inspired me to create my own original characters. In my first year of drawing art, there was a fair amount of art that I did that was more or less inspired directly by Vizipop. Though at the time, I was a little ashamed of ripping off her style. But one cool thing about taking inspiration from another artist, without directly copying them, is that it helps you figure out how to make your own work better, as well as giving you an idea of possible directions to take your art in. And if you practice emulating the style of multiple different artists, you can pick and choose different elements, incorporating them into your own work. And people will think you're original, but what you actually are is an amalgamation of all the artists that inspired you. But you're still unique. You're still the only artist that can depict things in the exact way that you're depicting them. You can still stand out. So that's the way I would hope that you approach this video. Hopefully you're not copying, tracing, passing off Vivzy Pop's work as your own, but instead just thinking more like a professional artist. With all that being said, let's get into how to replicate the style of Vivzy Pop's juicy animated works. We'll start by taking a look at The Queen. This is a character that was supposed to appear in Zoophobia, but for now only exists in the form of an art time lapse uploaded to Vivzy Pop's channel. The design of this energetic fox girl was inspired by pop singer Kesha, creator of the original TikTok, which is stated by Viv in the description of this video. Now, one thing that can be very helpful in understanding an artist's work is to look past all the overwhelming details and focus on the basics. Here, I've helpfully illustrated the basic shapes that make up this drawing, which is what it all boils down to in the end. First of all, it appears as though her legs are bent completely backwards and her neck is freakishly long. Well, it's not actually freakish, it's just longer than the average neck, let's just say that. But her legs are backwards because they are directly inspired by the legs of actual foxes and wolves. Now, the thing about a lot of four-legged animals is that what looks like a backwards leg situation is actually their foot, and what they're actually walking on is their toes. These are called digitigrade, digitigrade. digitigrade feet, and Vivzy Pop often likes to exaggerate this type of leg foot situation. She likes to give her characters really big feet. So I guess that's first on our Vivzy Pop checklist. Really big feet. This cartoon exaggeration is not limited to just the feet, however. All of the features of Viv's characters are exaggerated in some fashion, and they are exaggerated in different ways depending on the character. I trust that if you're watching this and you want to improve your art, you have the intelligence to use your own judgment when it comes to deciding how to exaggerate the design of your characters. One thing I would suggest is that if you do want your character to have, for example, big feet, Try making them bigger than you think you need to. You can always dial it back if they're too big. Another common theme with Fibsy Pop's characters is that they are often really tall, and really thin, 
Angel Dust, the spider demon prostitute character from Hasbin Hotel, has been stated to be around 9 feet tall. It's worth noting, however, that the height of the character doesn't necessarily make them appear tall. It's more a matter of proportion. Notice how long Angel's legs are, and how narrow his body is. So that's the next item on our checklist, tall and thin. Viv's characters also tend to have really big eyelashes, even some of the male characters. I should probably take this opportunity to remind you that, in real life, men also have eyelashes. The eyes also float in front of the rest of the face, presumably in order to maximize readability. In fact, pretty much every aspect of Ivzy Pop's character design is drawn with the intention of making things as clear and as readable as possible. For example, another feature of Viv's designs is long articulated fingers. However, I should probably mention that exaggeration and readability are an aspect of most exaggerated cartoon designs, and are definitely not unique to Viv in any way. But one thing that is pretty unique about Viv is the abundance of visual detail, which from what I've heard is what makes animating them particularly difficult. For instance, Husk, the alcoholic cat demon, also from Hasman Hotel, has huge wings with a complex pattern of spades and hearts all over them, which all had to be animated to some degree in the pilot episode of the show. I know I mentioned readability, and it could be argued that adding a whole bunch of detail to your characters makes them less readable, but there is a balance to be struck here. I personally would advise against adding too many details, but it's your art. You can do whatever you want. So that's the last couple of checklist items for Vivzy Pop's designs. In total, we have tall and thin, exaggerated features, which again, different features will be exaggerated depending on the character. But for example, wolves will have really big wolf feet. We also have big eyelashes, especially on female characters. And by the way, I know that big eyelashes could be lumped in with exaggerated features, but I want to emphasize this point in particular because it's an important aspect of many of Viv's characters. And finally, we have long articulated fingers and lots of visual detail, which is completely optional. One thing I've continuously tried to emphasize, particularly when talking about how Vivzy Pop presumably chooses what to exaggerate in her designs, is that you should always, above all else, use your own judgment. You could easily look at this checklist and think that you have to do all of these all of the time. It's easy to come up with your own idea of a Vivzy Pop design. It's quite a bit harder to look at her art objectively in order to determine exactly how she would design a character. There are so many little decisions that go into every aspect of every design, and there's no way anyone else will be able to completely replicate her exact visions. And well, you don't have to be Vivzy Pop, you can just be yourself. If being yourself isn't fun, well, I'm not a therapist, but I would suggest you try and do some self-reflection and meditation. Focus on your own inner demons before you focus on the has -been hotel demons. But nevertheless, I'm going to take a crack at making a character design that looks as much like Vivzy Pop as possible, or at least as much as I personally feel like making it look like Vivzy Pop. I've mentioned earlier that I've tried to replicate her style in the past, but I think I can do much better now. Let's draw this fox girl in a red dress. Now the way I like to work, or rather the way I feel comfortable working, is starting out with basic shapes, like the ones I described earlier. But I'm also constantly moving, rotating, and resizing parts of the drawing to get them where I feel like they should go, in order to make a drawing that's as consistent as possible, while also expressing what I want to express. For instance, I wanted to give this fox gal big animal feet, and it took a couple of tries before I figured out what looked the most natural. She's mid-stride, so there's going to be some implied motion in the legs, and I had to figure out how to reconcile that with the whole fox feet thing, where it looks like her leg is bent backwards. Fortunately, I was able to figure it out without too much trouble. Flipping the canvas is an essential part of my process now, but back when I made the original image, I hadn't quite figured out the best way to approach art yet, and this became immediately clear when I had the drawing loaded as a reference in this project file, and I was flipping the canvas and immediately noticed that it looked kind of off. If you have flipping your canvas as part of your artistic habits, your drawings will start to look much more consistent and solid. Another mistake I made in my original drawing, and in many drawings from around the same time, was the way I drew the hair. I would add tufts of hair to the top of the head, but nothing on the sides, making the hair very unbalanced. I think I was so focused on drawing the face that I didn't think about how most of my handiwork would then have to be obscured by the hair. Now I've gotten to the point where erasing parts of the drawing is an essential part of my process, whether I put work into it or not. If it has to go, it has to go. When drawing the fingers, I find it helpful to make them extremely pointy and triangular because thinking about fingers this way helps me make them more expressive and readable. In fact, I can often simplify the position of multiple fingers down to just one or two pointy shapes. 
I can always round the fingers out later, depending on how stylized I want the final result to be. Another thing to focus on when drawing hair, and also fur, is to make sure that not every tuft is the same shape. Usually I have both lines curving down, but sometimes you want to curve next to a straight, sometimes you want the two curves to funnel into each other, and sometimes you want to add extra dimension to the curves by making them bend in multiple directions. It all depends on what feels right, which is something that can only really be developed through practice and observation. In general, try to think about why you're doing things and how to do them differently. One big help is to pull up reference images. If you have a concrete idea of what you're trying to replicate or what design aspects you want to include in your own art, it's easier to figure out what to do with your drawing. There's a much stronger sense of direction. And now I'm going over the original sketch with a much more solid, definite line. This is still a sketch by my definition and I'll be doing the final line work over this layer, but this gives me a much better idea of what the final result will be. Sometimes I deviate quite a bit from the base sketch, since using a more confident line actually gives me more control over the shapes. In one of my recent drawings, where I was, incidentally, also trying to take direct inspiration from Vivzipop, I completely changed the face when I got to the secondary sketch layer, pushing the expression and tightening the shape language. Not that I'm an expert in shape language per se, but I think I have a pretty good idea of what looks appealing. Now, the final drawing is not going to look exactly like Vivzipop, because I am not Vivzipop. But the way I see it, I'm at the point in my art where I have a lot of control over the final product. As such, anything that doesn't look like Viv will look like my own personal style, which I am happy with. The final result will have everything I like about Viv without the things I personally wouldn't have wanted to include in my art anyway, which in the end simply comes down to personal preference. At the end of the day, you probably don't want to just be a copy of the artist you like, you want to be your own self. The artists that inspire you simply act as a direction, as a north star that leads you closer to who you want to be as an artist, without necessarily being the final destination. I think the best way to go about it is to study what you like about your favorite artists, and you can then start out by copying them, but eventually, through practice and observation, you'll start to naturally come up with a method of drawing that's more unique to you. For me personally, even though I did a lot of copying in order to learn how to draw, I still ended up with a style that I can pretty safely call my own. It's a style I enjoy drawing in, but I'm always trying to add more to it, so I can get a better idea of what my style actually is, and hopefully accomplish more of my artistic goals without falling short. It's a constant learning process, but I feel that I've gotten to the point where I can have fun learning, because even if I don't reach my goals exactly, I'm still a better artist than when I started, so the result will, more often than not, still look pretty good. So here's what we have so far. I feel like Viv would have exaggerated things more, but like I said earlier, I tend to drift towards my own personal style, regardless of how much I'm trying to replicate other artists. In this case, this is about as pushed as I personally want the drawing to be. And now it's time to do the final line work, coloring, shading, and background. For the line work, I use both traditional raster layers and a hybrid vector approach that lets me modify the lines after drawing them, depending on how hard the line would have been to draw otherwise. This feature is, as far as I know, pretty much exclusive to Paint Tool Sai, but to be honest, the lines wouldn't have been that hard to draw anyway, with the exception being the really long lines, where I would have had to use multiple strokes and lots of undoing and erasing to make it work. For the colors, I just color picked them from the original drawing. I didn't even need to adjust them all that much. Originally, I was going to include the heart motif from the old drawing, and I was going to give her lipstick, which I even sketched in, but I ended up forgetting to add it, and once I remembered, I realized that I personally preferred her without lipstick anyway. The only reason I added it in the original drawing was because I was envisioning a character that looked quite different from what ended up being the final result. The character I envisioned was more of an old-timey showgirl with a modern twist, sort of like Mayor Pauline from Super Mario Odyssey. But when I actually drew the character, I sort of ended up throwing random stuff at the wall instead, because I didn't know how to directly translate my inspiration into the actual drawing. The struggle of being a beginner artist is that the result is often a bit disappointing. You're still happy that you made something, but it can always be better. This updated drawing is not based upon my original vision for what 2018 me wanted the drawing to be. Instead, it's based upon what the drawing actually ended up looking like. The only thing I kept from my original vision was the thought process of, oh, I like Vivzy Pop, I want to make this look like Vivzy Pop. And now, three years later, I can actually make it look quite a bit like Viv if I do say so myself. According to Viv's time-lapse videos, she adds shading to her drawings by going over the color layers with a soft airbrush, then using a hard eraser to sharpen up the result. I tried doing that, but it personally didn't feel right to me. It felt like I didn't really have control over the shading. So what I did instead for this drawing was I went over the color layer with a relatively crisp airbrush, then erased it with a large airbrush to add softness. I also added a soft layer of extra shading to add dimension to certain areas, and a soft shine layer to add highlights to the hair. 
I also used airbrushes to add color to the line work on a clipping layer, which in paint tool size is a simple checkbox above the layer panel. By the way, I should probably mention that the fact that Viv uses paint tool size for her art is not something I'm deliberately emulating in this video. It's just coincidence. I originally used Photoshop, but decided to start using Paint Tool Sci after about a year of drawing and found that it was much faster in terms of loading times and memory usage. The background is always fun because in a lot of cases you can just throw everything at the wall. I made a whole bunch of stripes and dots in places that looked pretty and tried out a whole bunch of color combinations and layer modes. The background definitely helps to make the drawing pop, like Vivzy Pop. And this is the finished product, a pretty fox girl in a dress. I actually did some further edits off camera. I tweaked the background and some of the color values, but it was all just a whole bunch of boring stuff that didn't need to be recorded. Overall, I think this looks enough like a Vivzy Pop drawing that I can make the case that this is one of her long lost art pieces if I really wanted to. Also, I decided that the name of this fox girl is Cassandra. I don't know, it sounds fancy. She looks like a Cassandra. It's been a while since I last named one of my characters. So what did we learn in this video? Well, we learned the art of constructive stealing as long as you're not tracing another person's art, and as long as every line you draw is more or less completely your own, referencing someone else's art is totally okay, especially if you're drawing for fun. I don't think learning art should be completely boring. It's still good to learn the fundamentals of anatomy and shape language and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, then there's really no point. For me personally, I did not consider myself an artist for most of my life. I drew a couple of stick figures and self-portraits and trees here and there, but it wasn't until I realized that I could draw cute fluffy animal people that I really got motivated to improve at art. At the end of the day, draw what you like. Draw what you're passionate about and it'll be easier to find the motivation to improve. Thank you all for watching. I'm thinking about making this a series of some sort, but I don't want to overwhelm myself with work, so it might be a while. Though I have been known to get random bursts of motivation out of nowhere, so who knows? A new video could come out next week. Also, I'm trying to upload a more consistent style of content. I have another channel called Funk Tilda, where all my animations are, but it's sort of morphed into a has-been hotel hell of a boss meme channel, and I eventually got tired of my content being all over the place, so I started fresh with this channel. Hopefully this will be much more organized and I can add not a total disaster to my resume. Alright, goodbye. Stay cute.